Okay, let's give it a try. Hi, I'm Mike Hawes. I'm a retired elementary school teacher making my first YouTube, which is an unusual experience to say the least. Let me tell you how it came about. I wrote a letter to a school superintendent, something I've done for the last 10 years, and I knew I was probably going to get the same result, and I went to talk to my wife about it. It so happened that her granddaughter was here and said, why don't you try YouTube? But here I am at YouTube. I want to say right now that I've become a more emotional person and I'm hoping it's not going to impact my presentation. And let me tell you three of the emotions that concern me. Number one is care. There are very few things that I care more about than students learning, particularly elementary school students because I realize that if they do not learn what they need to know, if they're not literate and numerate, by the time they go to junior high, the odds are really stacked against them. Their life has been set right there, and this bothers me. The second thing is anger. As I mentioned, I've written many letters to school board members and to superintendents that got no response. This makes me very angry because they are setting up roadblocks for me, and they are setting up roadblocks for anyone else who wants to make a difference. It's just unacceptable the impact they have on other people. The last one is fear. I am fearful of two things. Number one is, what if I screw this up? What determines whether a teacher is a good teacher or an excellent teacher is their ability to motivate. Am I going to motivate you to want to make a difference, to do something, to take the action that needs to be done? The second fear is if I don't, what is going to happen to those students who do not make it? Not only now, but in the future. We've got a serious problem. Getting back to the letter again, what brought it on was that I read an article in the newspaper. They were talking about the test results for the junior high. And they were talking about what percentage of students passed the 8th grade achievement test. And I'm thinking, what would be acceptable? 50% inner city school? Maybe. It wasn't that. 25%? No. I'll just tell you now. 1% of the students passed this test. One out of every 100 students passed this test. I don't know if you understand what that means. Does it mean the 99% won't go to high school? Of course they will. But they have no future. They are finished. This is not acceptable. Things have changed a great deal also in our economy. We have technology, and we think how great technology is. Well, there are problems with technology. I'll give examples. Recently, I read that any child who was born is not going to drive a car. We're having auto cars, auto trucks. I saw a picture of a tr semi-truck delivering beer. Truck drivers are not going to be a profession of the future. In my area, they were talking about building a new warehouse, Amazon Warehouse. I'm thinking, great, a lot of jobs. Wrong. This is something almost I consider science fiction. Robots are going to be doing the work. I happened to be in a Home Depot store. There were four checkouts. They had five checkout stands, one with a human. The other four were self-checkout stands. It's just amazing changes. So these kids who used to be able to get a job are now not going to be able to do it. We had the most amazing, divisive presidential election we've ever had, and one thing that came up was how abysmal education is. There's no doubt about it. They mentioned the 30 countries and where we rated, and it was near the bottom. They both agreed. The one thing they couldn't agree with, because neither one had a solution as to what they were going to do to make education better in America. Well. Before you determine what needs to be done, you've got to determine what is the cause of the poor education. I feel there are two reasons. The first reason is that education is not a business. And let me explain what I mean by that. If a new car company comes out with a new car and 99% of the cars don't work, let's consider that scenario. If a surgeon is working in a hospital and 99 out of 100 patients die, both of those people, the CEO and the doctor, face the same consequences. They're gone! This does not happen in elementary. This does not happen in education. What I'm saying is, when was the last school board members 
Most school board members, and I looked at the things that I get in the mail, this is not the first time they run. They've been there for 20 or 30 years. They never leave their job. Superintendents, there are no consequences for poor performance. That's one reason that education is not going to change because it just, we keep going on as bad as it is and it gets worse. We do not make changes at the top. What can we do? Very simple. We tell our school board members if there's not a significant improvement, then you're out. The next thing is teachers. I can remember it was quite a while ago when I got my teaching credential that the expression was those who can't teach, teach teachers. Think about that. And I hate to say it, but I think that's still the case. I happen to be talking to someone who recently started working in an inner city school. Obviously one of the most difficult positions out. But this teacher will admit that he had not been trained for this. Obviously we are not, since the inner city schools keep going down, not up. The teachers are not receiving the proper training that they need to survive. We have to do something about that. And I can do something about that because I can train the teachers. Because I can train them how to use my program beyond phonics. This is, this is an answer. And I, I've got another one too, but beyond phonics will do it. Getting back to, again, my anger with the school board members, that 1%. What I would say for consequences, we can't cut their jaws, but I'd like them to be at the graduation line as those students pass by. And yes, they're all going to high school, even the 99% who didn't pass. And look at them in the face and say, sorry, I failed you. You have no future. I hate to use the F word, but I'm going to do it. These school board members and school administrators are feckless. Yes, they are feckless.